How can a cold water fish end up on dinner tables in over 100 countries? From high-end sushi in Japan to grilled dishes in New York. Why is Norwegian salmon not just food, but called the apple of the global food industry? What makes a country with just over 5 million people able to dominate the world's salmon market for decades? While many countries still see fish farming as a branch of marine agriculture, Norway has turned it into a closed-loop bio-industrial chain, operating as precisely as a factory. So how did Norway do this? And more importantly, is this a model to learn from, or something that only exists in one special country? What is it about their unique system that makes the world take notice? On this journey, we will explore every link in Norway's salmon farming system and draw our own conclusions, because what you are about to see will not only change how you view salmon, but might make you rethink the entire modern agriculture industry. You think salmon are born from eggs, grow up in cold spring water, and then get released into the ocean? In Norway, that's been outdated for over 50 years. Here, creating a new generation of salmon doesn't start with nature, but with data. In 1971, Norway launched a national salmon breeding program, a step that most fish farming countries still haven't taken at a similar level. Instead of selecting fish by instinct, they select fish using biological indicators. Each generation of fish is evaluated based on growth rate, natural disease resistance, ideal meat color for export, feed conversion efficiency. Only the genetically most optimal fish are allowed to reproduce. And the eggs produced by these individuals are not just eggs. They are the biological data foundation for an industry that is expanding globally. Norway doesn't just breed fish, they develop the next generation breed. Every hatchery in Norway operates like a miniature R&D center. They have a DNA analysis department. They monitor gene expression under different farming conditions. They constantly update to improve the national salmon quality. They're not just raising fish to sell. They're developing a generation of commercial organisms, like how humans develop high yield rice varieties. And you know what? These juvenile fish, once they're ready, won't be released randomly into the sea. They are allocated to licensed ecological zones, according to a farming map that only Norway possesses. Keep watching, because this is when you'll see how Norwegian salmon grow up in the ocean, unlike Canada, where each farm is monitored. Here the entire sea is operated like a technological ecosystem, where every current and every fish is part of the calculation. They don't release fish wherever it seems reasonable based on gut feeling. They divide the entire coastline into 13 ecological zones for fish farming, and each zone has its own schedule, when farming is allowed, when there must be a break, when mandatory seabed cleaning is required. That is, the fish don't just live in the sea, they live on a schedule. And that system isn't created by intuition. It's all built from data, flow rate, seasonal water temperature, dissolved oxygen concentration, risk of disease spread from neighboring areas. Norway doesn't ask, can we farm here? They ask, does farming here help the entire ecosystem stay safe and sustainable? And what amazes the entire global aquaculture industry is how Norway doesn't just use technology to monitor each farm, but to coordinate the entire sea as an open biological factory. Each fish farming fjord operates like a production unit with its own operating system. All farms in the area synchronize data to the central hub, from feeding rate and fish density to microorganisms in the water. The indicators are sent to the regional operating system, where AI assesses the level of biological safety in real time. When there's an anomaly, stressed fish, contaminated water, heavily organic seabed, the system will trigger an automatic warning. They don't wait for the fish to die before taking action. They proactively intervene before problems occur. Each sea area operates according to a biological quota, maximum density, permitted emission levels, mandatory ecological rest days, 
movement schedules between areas to prevent cross-contamination. Technology here isn't used to track fish. It's used to maintain a stable biological rhythm for an entire continuously operating ecosystem. If Canada is the story of farming clean in each fish pen, then Norway is the story of operating a system that runs like an airport, but underwater. Do you know this interesting fact? In Norway, even the ocean has rest days. After each farming cycle, that sea area is required to be left unused for a certain period, according to national regulations. No new farming. No adding more cages. No maximizing exploitation. They call it biological fallowing, like how farmers rotate crops to allow the soil to recover. During the rest period, ROVs will inspect the seabed, sediment, microorganisms, oxygen. Similar to Canada, if it exceeds the limit, the farm cannot operate the following season. But the difference is, neighboring areas will also be analyzed to assess the risk of disease transmission, and it's all reported through a national platform, transparently and synchronously. Imagine, the ocean is divided into zones like rice paddies. Each zone has a farming schedule, a rest schedule, a cleaning schedule, a restocking schedule. No one decides based on feeling. Only data has the right to allow you to release fish into the sea. And that's just the ocean part. Back on land, Norway has been operating a whole new generation of farms. Places where they don't need the sea, there's no discharge, and everything from water to nutrients is programmed inside containers. While many countries are still debating how many more fish pens to add out at sea, Norway has already taken a step ahead, not expanding into the ocean, but separating from the ocean completely. They're building salmon farms right on land, with no contact with the sea. Not an experiment, not an alternative solution, but a strategy to scale up the seafood industry without scaling up the ocean. You might have heard the name RAS before, Recirculating Aquaculture System, a closed-loop fish farming system that might not sound all that new. But unlike Canada, where it accounts for less than 1%, in Norway, RAS isn't just technology. It's a strategic step for the entire industry. It's separately licensed by the government. There are dedicated investment funds for it. And there's a clear development roadmap for each region and market segment. In other words, instead of expanding further out into the ocean, Norway is choosing to build more oceans, right on land. And that's what amazes the whole world. Because RAS completely changes the definition of the salmon industry. No longer dependent on weather or seasons. Not affected by native ecosystems. Not limited by location. It can be placed in the mountains, remote areas, or industrial zones. A salmon farm can now be built in the middle of a frozen landscape, but the product can still end up on tables in Tokyo, New York, or Singapore in just a few days. But more importantly, RS helps Norway grow without clashing with nature. No taking up more ocean space, no risk of spreading disease to the environment, no impact on wild fish populations. This is how Norway is solving the problem of ecological limits with systems thinking, not by exploiting, but by redesigning the entire model. In Norway, salmon isn't just raised as a living creature, it's also treated as a bio-industrial product, with processes, standards, and operating codes like an electronic component. At the processing centers near the farms, the fish are put onto the harvesting line according to the exact production order. And the sorting process is completely automated. The fish are passed through a laser scanning system to determine meat texture, color, and firmness. Sensors will sort each fish into groups suitable for specific markets. Here, no one has to look at the fish to guess. Machines do it all.
In Norway, traceability isn't just to show consumers that the fish is clean. It's a mandatory part of operating the supply chain. Each container has a QR code with the harvest date, storage temperature, and the departure area. If a defect is detected by the importer, Norway can trace the exact batch of fish, the time, and even the production team. This is no longer just food. It's a standardized industrial product. And what amazes the world the most is the speed. From the moment the fish are harvested in Norway to the packaging stage, transferred to a central cold storage, transported by plane or refrigerated container, delivered to a restaurant in Tokyo, Seoul, or New York, it only takes less than 48 hours. And that's why Norwegian salmon can be found in over 100 countries, while still maintaining its freshness as if it was just pulled from the sea. It's not because they farm close by. It's because they have a supply chain, as precise as a clockwork mechanism. Of course, salmon in Norway isn't priced based on gut feeling. It's positioned based on standardization, speed, and global reliability. When people think of marine agriculture, they often think of something still wild, something connected to nature, to the ocean, to people working amidst the waves. But Norway is different. They don't farm fish in the traditional way. They've designed a system where everything from the fish egg to the sashimi slice operates according to the principles of an open biological factory. No element in Norway's salmon chain is random. From the zoning map of the fjords to the genetic breeding program, from the RAS model, completely separated from nature, to the transcontinental logistics network. Everything is operated no differently than a high-precision industrial line. The only difference is, the raw material is alive. And the result? They don't just export fish. They export a production model, a standard, and a belief that marine agriculture can absolutely be modern, clean, and reliable. But at this point, a big question arises. Will the global seafood industry follow the Norway model? A future where data replaces experience, where speed replaces tradition, and where nature is brought into the system? Or vice versa? Will some countries choose a different path? Not industrializing at any cost, but preserving the wildness of the ocean as an irreplaceable part? What do you think? Are we entering a new era, where raising fish is no longer a matter for farmers, but for biological engineers? Share your thoughts. And don't forget, the journey to explore modern agriculture is still very long ahead. Next video, we'll go to Japan to explore a completely different story. Not farming, but fishing. Not salmon, but squid. And the question is, what has made the squid fishing industry in Japan, a seemingly simple and traditional industry, become one of the most precise, technologically advanced, and highly disciplined systems in the world?